Alright, if you guys have been keeping up on videos, you know that I haven't had much time to fly my paramotor, weather, work, airplane, all that stuff has been taking up my time. Um, and the unfortunate part about that is that the guys at Fly PPG sent me out a Hadron 3. And they sent it out weeks ago, and I feel bad that I've had it for so long. Um, I was only supposed to have it for a week, but um, anyway, they sent that out weeks ago, but I haven't had time to fly it. I got a like a 10 minute chance to fly it when I was in Indiana, because I brought it with me, and someone let me borrow a motor while I was there. Um, and it was fun, but I really didn't get to try it out. It was you know the first flight on a new wing, so you kind of take it easy. Um, but this morning is gorgeous. Uh, we're actually headed to the airport anyways, because I'm gonna have my buddy fly my airplane to a different airport to have work done on it so I figure let's go a little bit early and fly the paramotor so uh, yeah let's fly the Hadron 3 and by the way it's a 16 meter which I'm overloaded for so it should be fun Guys, we should be ready to go. As we're clipping in here, let's go over the Hadron 3. This is their cross-country wing. This, they, they target this as their, uh, I think their newest cross-country wing. And they say that it's a cross between the Hadron XX and the Hadron, uh, I think it's the, called the 1.2, whatever the Hadron preceding this one was. So what I am flying, though, is a 16-meter version of that. So I'm, I'm overloaded on it. I, I don't know the numbers. I'll overlay them here. But I think I'm overloaded by... Um, maybe five or ten kilograms. So let's see what that does. Man, I forgot how powerful this freaking engine is. It's insane. I moved back to the 140 centimeter prop, and my god, man, so much power. Last time I launched this swing, I did it at like seven, and um, I had wind, and it was a hell of a run still. So. We'll try and no win three. The farther out your trims are, the easier the inflation is, but the faster you gotta run. So I can commit to a three, I think. Pre flight complete, all clipped in. Make my radio call. Somerville traffic, ultralight powered paraglider taking off from the field adjacent to the ramp. Uh, any other traffic in the area, please advise Somerville. Okay, I don't hear anybody. So I'm gonna call that good. Good trip setting for sure. Oh, it's nice up here. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh my god. Yeah, I flew my airplane home yesterday, so I did get some airtime, but I have not been on my paramotor in weeks. What a completely different experience. It's just it's just different. And look at I can see my airplane from up here. How cool is that? So cool, man. Yeah, if you guys aren't aware, go back a couple of videos for the story on the airplane. But today's about the Hadron. More specifically, ugh, when you overload a cross-country glider like this. So, all right. So, yeah, Hadron 3, guys. And again, thank you to the guys at Fly PPG for sending me out this week to try out. Let's try some, some cross-country features. So I'm overloaded on it, so you would expect some oscillations. I'm, I'm not feeling anything. Yeah. The thing is, is it's stable for sure. Let's do this. Let's induce one. So full brake. I'll keep my head parallel, or even with the paramotor. Let's see if it corrects. Okay. Still going. It's not getting any worse. And it is dampening slowly. And I've not, I'm at cruise power. But it is dampening very slowly. Okay. So I think that would eventually damp itself out. It didn't get any worse. On the uh, free ride, you do that. On my 15 free ride, you do that. It's going to 
it's going to amplify. You're going to you're going to keep getting worse and worse until you eventually do something to stop it. Um, so it does have that feature, and I bet again if I was flying the right size wing, that would dampen out quicker. But I don't know. Um, so what can we try? The brakes are friggin' so long on this thing. It does have 2D steering. It's got a little handle here for the tip line. Um, looks like some serious trimmer travel and a good speed bar length, which I'll not be trying out today because my speed bar is not adjusted correctly. All right, so let's do, yeah, let's just do a couple of turns here. Power, oh yeah. Yep. No, this is definitely in a glider for experienced people. High hour pilot glider. Yeah, this is by no means like a an intermediate cross country glider. You could definitely. I mean, I'm barely. Look at this. I mean, you could barely see. I'm using maybe an inch of brake travel or less on either side to do that. Those are some decent turns. Yeah, let's cut to me at a higher altitude so we can go upside down. Wow. It's actually really clear today. I would not have expected that. It's super humid, but I can see all the way to the ocean again. This has only happened one other time that I've been flying here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, man, that is gorgeous. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, that is gorgeous. Hell yeah. All right, focus. Side note real quick. This Pluma 2.0, or the, this, this Pluma that I'm flying, the newest version of it, um, is a lot better. I had my doubts. I was like, well, it doesn't, you know, the geometry changes were so subtle. And this, you can't really see a difference, but I can tell you that uh, I don't feel near as much torque on this frame as I did on the other one. On my first Pluma, when I would climb, I told you guys I'd have to, like, counter with weight shift. This thing climbs almost dead straight. I don't know what they did, but it worked. Um, so that's a little side note. I'll do a full review on this engine later on. What a gorgeous day. I want to make a real call real quick. And Somerville traffic, uh, ultralight powered paraglider about 1,500 feet, uh, about two miles south of the airport. Uh, any other traffic in the area, please advise Somerville. Uh, I just let, let me know if anyone's flying around. I don't hear anybody responding. So, all right, let's practice some maneuvers. Uh, let's get a little turn going this way, this way. Oh man, yeah, this thing is, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. Let's see how it comes out. Oh, it's really efficient. It takes almost 360 degrees to burn that off. It doesn't lose altitude nearly as fast as the um, free ride does, which is nice. It's it's. I don't know what the Viper 5 flies like, but it's it's more akin to like a Viper 4, um, where it, it's flickable but efficient. That's kind of what I feel like this this feels like. And I've never tested the Viper 4 for cross-country ability, so I don't know what that's like. So yeah, guys, I actually, um, I really like this wing so far. I like that it's efficient, doesn't dive, it doesn't seem to oscillate, it seems stable. It's almost like a good, really good all-around wing. Uh, compared to the free ride, the free ride is a little bit more flickable, I'll say, but less stable. Uh, the free ride, if you get it oscillating, it's you gotta you gotta stop it actively. It doesn't just stop itself. And I feel like if you were sized correctly on this wing, it would stop itself. Um, launch characteristics, I've launched it twice and both of them went fine. Like I said, the first launch I did, I launched at trim seven. So um, it was a hell of a run, but good inflation. Yeah, just it it feels like it'd be a good all around wing. If you're shopping for a wing and you only need one or want one. Um, I think this would be a good option. If I got one, I'd probably, I'd probably keep it at a 16, overloaded, because it suits my flying style more. But if you fly more cross country, um, you know, maybe size it up a little bit. I mean, this thing is no joke. Look at that, that's one turn. Ugh. Pull some cheese. Ugh. Oh, 
Oh, wow, okay. I haven't had that happen in forever. I just lost my eyesight for a second. <laughs> wow, that has not happened in a long time. When I was first learning to do wingovers and barrel rolls, I remember that happening a few times. Um, but that has not happened in a while. <laughs> That's a scary feeling. And Somerville traffic, ultralight powered paraglider. We're departing the area to the southeast. Uh, we're going to be doing some low flight below 500 feet. We'll make a call when we get back, Somerville. It's a beautiful morning. Oh my god, you guys. Sometimes you forget how fun this is. Four weeks, I'm like, do I want to wake up and go fly that paramotor? I gotta get it into the truck, get the cameras ready, run <laughs> into the air. But every time, oh my god, you guys, this week's freaking cool. Cross country, my ass, what are they talking about? This thing gets it. If you're thinking, oh, I don't want a cross country glider because I want to be able to rip it, you don't have to worry about that with this wing. Oh, baby. And I like that it doesn't dive, actually. I kind of like that feature. I don't know how swoopy landings would go, but I'm not a big swoopy landing kind of guy anyway, because I suck. Let's try a little 90 degree swoopy. Let's say I'm landing. Ah, that's not a good swoopy. Oh, yeah, it is. Ah, yeah, see, it balloons a little bit. Maybe if I went trims out a little bit more. I think the trimmer's out just a little bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, flying underground. The other day someone posted some bulletin from the sheriff's department. They had a picture of somebody flying over a construction site and they wanted to identify him <laughs> for trespassing. Which is funny because you can't really trespass in the air. I mean, you could be a dick in the air and fly over people's property and piss them off and shit. But um, it's not technically trespassing, so you're not breaking the law. If that happened to me, I would 100% turn myself in and I'd record the whole thing. Was, oh my god, you guys. This glider's no joke. This glider's no joke. Oh yeah. So you could drop down in here. Get hit in the face with a bunch of bugs, though. Oh, cool. You can see all the spider webs. Ah! Wow, look at that. That's cool. The dew on all the spider webs. Dragonflies everywhere. All right. There are people working back here, so I am going to get out of here now. They like it. <laughs> Smile on every one of their faces, man. That's cool. Dude, I want to fly through that so bad. Look at that. I could make it. Ah, oh, it's so it's so tempting. But so stupid. guys I'm gonna make my way back to the airport and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on the swing so um, in conclusion I'm flying back right now and it is dead stable so that is an it that is a, a feature that it has over the free ride for sure it's rock solid I mean I'm if I did this on the free ride that th it would just start going for sure it's a hands-on wing this this swings just stable um, if I had to do like a cross-country race or I was cross-country flying a lot um, I, I would honestly look at like an 18 or 20 meter Hadron 3. I think that would be just a sweet wing. Um, 
it's efficient, high aspect ratio. ratio but even on a 16, I'm at 5,600 RPM. I am on the factory swinging a 140, but still, uh, it's efficient. Um, and like I said, it's got a huge trimmer range. Actually, let's do that real quick. Let's see how this thing trims out. Oh God, she's tight. That's what she said. <laughs> Let's pull trim out. Okay, yeah. All right, let's see. I don't have wind direction yet, so that's I'm doing 31 miles an hour or 33 that direction. Let's go back the other way. Okay, there's 180 degrees. Oh hell yeah, I'm doing 39. Okay, so 39 this direction. No, 40. We're calling it 40. Okay, 31 and 39. So let's say around 35, 36 miles an hour. She does trimmed out. Okay, let's go full, uh, full slow. All right, full slow this direction, 33. Full slow this direction, looks like about 24. So there you go. It's got a really good speed range uh, in the trimmers alone. Again, I'm not hooking up the speed bar, but it has, I don't know, damn near eight to ten inches of speed bar travel so the top speed in this wing is in the 40s probably upper 40s at this size wing at my weight all right guys so my gopro battery ended up dying right here so i don't have my landing um, but i just flew back to the airport and landed at this point so not missing much all right guys so i really like this wing um i've been fortunate enough to fly quite a bit of wings and been fortunate enough to review a bunch of them for this channel and um, I'm gonna put this one in my top three wings. So the Free Ride, Gin Carve, and this Hadron 3 now. Um, any one of those wings I would be happy to own and as my only wing. They all do everything I like. Um, this one shines a little bit more, I think, in the cross country aspect. Like I said, it's more stable than the Free Ride. And I don't remember if the Carve was really stable or not, um, but I know that neither the Free Ride or the Carve are targeted for that. They're targeted for slalom stuff. So this is stable, but it's still hot. Um, especially if you're overloaded on it like I am at like the 16 meter range. Um, it really does everything I need to do. It barrel rolls fine. Um, I did some big Bodie wing overs and it it does everything perfect. It's very controllable, confidence aspiring, uh, stable, efficient, smooth, looks cool. Um, great trimmer range. I, this is an awesome wing. I have zero complaints about it. Nothing to say. So thanks guys at Fly PBG for sending this out. Let me try it and for letting me hang on to it for four weeks. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to get it back in the mail to you guys here soon. Um, if you guys uh, like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.